Hello and welcome back. In this short lecture, we will be learning about Azure Active Directory. If you want to know about Azure Active Directory, so this Azure Active Directory or sometimes we call AAD. So it's a fully managed multi-tenant service from Microsoft that can offer you for the identity and access capability management for your applications as well as your user management and on your devices and the groups also whereas in other hand if you try to compare with windows active directory uh, it was not designed for web-based services to manage so that's where it's gonna you know uh, face the problem whereas with the azure active directory it has the capabilities of uh, built-in rust when i say rest rest is a protocol rest stands for representational state transfer api interfaces uh, which are definitely used in office 365 and salesforce.com or maybe in another uh, applications which are trying to develop as a cloud native so that can easily understand uh, as your active directory and based on that it can work so as your active directory has single sign-on uh, which is very simplified for your access and also you have the conditional access with the multi-factor authentication can be enabled and single identity platform that uh, can manage all your internal as well as external users uh, securely also you can develop the tools and you can easily integrate them with your identity um, from Microsoft and this is a single sign-on uh, option you can choose for thousands of applications which are predefined uh, as available as a software as a service model for you now if you're thinking about the pricing yes the pricing um, there are the pricing options you have the first thing is the free uh, when you talk about the free there are a few of the limitations with the Microsoft Azure trial uh, or the full-fledged Azure Active Directory uh, which uh, can be enrolled by going into portal.azure.com and sign up for the Azure account that would actually create a tenant um, when I say tenant it would be a on microsoft.com ID so this is my tenant for example if you see here when I sign up this is my tenant ID and this would be a unique ID if you want to create you can create multiple directories and inside these directories you will have the user accounts and the groups as well as the devices if you see here devices will be there so everything um, will be available from this directories and if you're looking at the pricing side yes there are you know 50,000 uh, objects uh, close to it is almost free with the single sign-on up to 10 applications and of course there are a few of the limitations and the offer for us as a free and also Microsoft Azure uh, Active Directory will be available as the license for P1 as well as the P1 stands for the premium one as well as the premium two licensing models also if you have already subscribed for office 365 uh, any of the cloud applications like uh, exchange or outlook or any other services um, it would actually create a tenant and as a tenant this kind of a tenant would be created that means you are running actually on azure active directory your user accounts now as a next step uh, i can show you here the pricing uh, which is a free uh, anything with the 50,000 plus objects which are free and also if you are using office 365 any of the e1 or e3 or e5 or f1 models uh, it's a free and if you're using anything six dollar to nine dollar between p1 and p2 would be costing you azure active directory is a flat namespace model when i say that you will not have any grouping options let's see in your active directory you used to have on a windows active directory like a OUs or organization units we call it or maybe a class between those domains to segregate those objects uh, we used to have some kind of you know, structure but um, that kind of structure no more uh, will will be getting with Azure Active Directory so it's a flat name model I mean you cannot create here any of the folder kind of things under users or under groups like you can create direct group names what of the group names you want or maybe a user groups directly so 
if you want to search for any of the devices or the groups all you have to do is you have to search here or filter the required object so that you will be getting the required output let's try to understand about the identity models within microsoft azure active directory uh, if you see here if you just got the signed up with within the microsoft azure active directory or maybe office 365 for that case you can have your complete identities will be managed uh, with azure active directory that means um, if it is a new startup company and they don't have any previous windows active directory or maybe any other LDAP server integrations then they simply use the cloud only identity model and uh, there's uh, another one called synced identity so let's say you have already windows active directory on your on premises and you wanted to carry those identities to be synced uh, with microsoft azure active directory in that situation you would be actually using a tool called azure ad connect so this is a tool uh, it's a combination of uh, previously used different tools now it's a single tool made our life easy um, when you, you know use this tool to sync your on-premises active directory objects with azure active directory that means on the cloud so you get the power of azure active directory even for the objects that are on your on-premises let's have a look on our Azure AD Connect architecture. So you will have your Azure Active Directory. So definitely that means you will be ending with some kind of uh, Azure portal trial or maybe you simply sign up and you create Azure AD uh, or Active Directory or maybe you have already Office 365 subs subscription. That means you will be ending up with some kind of tenant name. Uh, for example, when it's a tenant, uh, it should be a unique tenant like uh, test dot on microsoft.com so that nobody else can create another test uh, dot on microsoft.com let's see if you are creating a username so that username will be a username at test dot on microsoft.com and what if if you are completely signed up uh, with this tenant name called test dot on microsoft.com later point you registered your domain name um, so that the users can log in with username at maybe your company name.com so the same things happens for your office 365 let's say your users are trying to log into office 365 by for signing the email so what they do is initially they sign up with some uh, as a office 365 admin he would be creating a tenant id or when he sign up it itself creates actually in the background and then he will be adding his uh, godaddy specific uh, domain or maybe wherever he has domain uh, that public dns records so that he will be verifying this uh, domain name so that the users can log in with username at the company name dot com now once the verification is completed he would be getting like username at on company dot com so there's a high end uh, ad connect architecture just for uh, reference now we would be doing all this in a practically but i just wanted to give you an overview how it works so let's take another um, st structural document for example if you see here as your active directory you have ad forest now you use the ad connect so that it's actually syncing uh, like you know here the objects will be pulled vice versa and the objects will be available in azure ad so what would happen is if you just go to your azure ad the source if you look at the source it is actually showing as the azure active directory what happens is if it is synced the object is coming from your active directory you would be actually getting as a source as windows server ad instead of azure active directory and if you see here microsoft account with this account i did actually signed up so i'm actually getting this account name is visible otherwise um it, you would be you know, getting two different source one would be the microsoft uh, azure active directory other one would be the windows or uh, windows server so just to conclude this lecture azure ad provides as an identity 
access management solution for your entire cloud applications as well as for your on-premises also the reason being I said uh, if you start syncing up with Azure AD Connect uh, for example you see here I did actually synced up already and I can you know uh, show you that you know later point how to sync but you know my on-premises applications also will get all the benefits that are coming from my Azure Active directly so that would uh, makes my uh, management easy for example if I want to you know enable all these users are coming from my on-premises to uh, enable maybe a multi-factor authentication if they are coming from a different um, uh, remote location instead of uh, from the office location I can enable multi-factor authentication I can validate their uh, login activities if anything goes going wrong or like you know interrupted or failure all that can be tracked in a one place and you get all the benefits in fact uh, you also need to enable definitely the licenses for those users um, like a uh, like we discussed like P1 and P2 uh, P stands for the as your premium so premium one and premium two is the higher uh, licenses so in our case we are going to try with the uh, premium two with almost all the uh, possible options um, that we have like privileged um, identity management solutions or just in access uh, for the VM so that means if a few minutes only uh, we will have the access for that VM or maybe uh, for that uh, specific uh, time or maybe that change management window time only will be uh, get that global admin permissions to perform that specific action post to that it gets automatically closed all the uh, permissions so we have a lot of things um, within Microsoft Azure Active Directory to you know talk about like the application registrations you can register your own application so that uh, you no need to you no need to again uh, maintain an additional level of your identities uh, identities of usernames and passwords instead you register here and give that um, uh, that token ID for example is certificates or maybe that authentication specific uh, consents you can you know give it or you can even uh, request your rust based application information so that our users get that specific uh, platform configurations and users can automatically um, access that access tokens uh, to get that ID access uh, will be you know, automatically provided so it's so easy uh, to get all these permissions and other things uh, when we talk about uh, programmers point of view for example if a developer trying to come up and he's trying to develop maybe application all we will be doing is we will be asking him to you know create an application here as a registered here so that identities will be managed here if they are trying to develop a, either um, any of the existing uh, applications uh, which are already there in the uh, Microsoft Azure they can you know use that or they can create uh, their own applications like Microsoft rest based applications so that it could be your uh, in-house application which uh, works on cloud native protocols and that uh, advantage you would be you not know, taking out of it so we will be discussing all this in the upcoming Azure AD or identity access management solution I hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this and we'll catch you in the next lecture